and I don't have anything going for me, so he said, we'll just say Charlotte's favorite. Woo! So thank God we're in Monroe, so you guys don't know that I am not one of Charlotte's favorites. Um, I was driving the other day, and I was going 65 and a 35, and I got pulled over, obviously, as you do, and I got a ticket for reckless endangerment, and I was really upset because I thought things were easier for women. Like, I thought if I cried, I could get out of it, but I was wrong, um, and that made me realize that cops don't let you off the hook for being cute anymore, or at the very least, I'm not cute enough to get away with it, you know? And it's like, I was really bummed out, and I was like, I kind of wanted to offer to blow him, but I was scared of what would happen if he said yes, you know? Because it's like, I gave him, you know, informed consent, so it's like, I would have to do it. But based off of my bad skill set, I would still be going home with a ticket. <laughs> and I would be scared that he might beat me with that little baton. So, you know, I would have to make him come, but I would be out $250 for the ticket and full of semen. So it's like, I lost twice that day. It's upsetting, because that is what happened. It's on his body cam. Um, but... You know, I realized that I can't really compete with prostitutes because they blow cops all the time. So it's like cops are always getting jobs by professionals. So I figured the only way to beat them would be to join them. So I decided to become a prostitute. And um, I figured that the only way that I could make top dollar would be to let them come inside me, you know? So I figured I should get birth control because nothing would affect my potential as a prostitute like an unplanned pregnancy. Like, I know that there's a kink for that, so guys would still want to fuck me. You know, I've seen the videos, but I would feel really bad traumatizing my child so early in development, you know? Like, I like to tell my mom I remember her having sex while she was pregnant, so... I wouldn't want my poor crack addict baby to come out and tell me in 10 years that, you know, he remembered me getting fucked in the back of a car. Um, so I decided that the only thing I could do would be to go to Planned Parenthood. Because I, I always heard that you're supposed to spend money to make money, but I don't really like that idea. I decided to go where they go to get free abortions, you know, because I figured if the abortion is free, the before step should also be free because it's less invasive. So I went to Planned Parenthood and whenever I pulled up, I was kind of surprised because there was a man standing outside yelling about Jesus and I had only seen that on TV. I didn't think I was really gonna come in contact with that ever in my existence, but I was wrong. He was out there on a Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. holding a rainbow sign talking about God. And I'm like, this rainbow sign goes against what you're saying right now, sir. Do you understand you're representing gay pride? And he did not. He just started yelling at me, saying that God couldn't help me if I went in there. And I was like, God is not going to be able to put this little bitch in my arm, you know, to put these chemicals so that my eggs stop dropping. God can't help me do that, but he gave the scientists the knowledge, and those scientists can help these little doctors do that for me. So I just disregarded him, but while I was sitting, waiting to get that birth control shoved up my arm, I started thinking, maybe I don't want to be a prostitute. But then I thought, what else could I do in the South to be successful? And the only two things I could come up with were either being a nurse or joining a pyramid scheme. And to me, both of those are way more degrading than prostitution. So I just decided to stick with the birth control. But when I started thinking about pyramid schemes, I started thinking about all the girls in high school who would make fun of me for reading my horse books and galloping from class to class and playing. You know, like, I was just really large back in those days, you know, but I didn't get invited to any sleepovers. That's the shitty part about it. But they all popped up recently for me trying to hit up my Facebook Messenger DMs. Already low, like Facebook, like you couldn't even find me on Instagram. You had to go close on the totem pole. 
but they'll be like, hey girl, I miss you so much. I hope you're doing well. I have this great business opportunity for you. And it's normally some stupid $60 lotion that's gonna send you to the dermatologist instead of save you from the dermatologist. So I just leave those little cunts on red and it just makes me feel so much better about how they used to open my Snapchats and then screenshot them and post them on their story like this girl. This girl's a weirdo. So, you know, it made me feel really good knowing that they got pregnant right out of high school because they didn't go to Planned Parenthood like I did. And they married some blue collar worker, probably by the name of like Judd or Jim or something like that. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. And um, they end up getting divorced because they spent all of their blue collar worker husband's money monogramming everything in the house. So it's like they wasted his money and their time because those aren't their initials anymore. So, it's like you've got this pillow that says bless this house CSG and it's like that, none of those are your initials anymore. You changed your middle name to your last name and then your last name to his last name and then you just reverted back to your maiden name because fuck everything else and you just have wasted like $60 on this pillow. And I just think that's hilarious and I love that that's happened to all the girls I went to high school with. Nothing makes me more glad than hearing about their suffering. But there was this one girl that hit me up recently and she was like, have you heard of Herbalife tea? And I was like, yes. And she was like, it's a really great diet supplement. I think it'll really help you out. And I was like, did you not look at my profile picture? Like, if I lose any more weight, I am going to die. Like, it will be swift. Like, if you took a picture of me right now, in this moment and turned it to black and white and showed it to a stranger, they'll be like, wow, I didn't know they let prisoners make speeches in the office. And it's like, they didn't. And if they did, they got shot in the head right away. But you know, the idea is there. So I decided that I didn't want to do pyramid schemes and I really didn't want to be a nurse because anytime I meet a nurse, they are always really mad or really sad or really drunk or their shit's monogrammed too. So I know they can across some kind of something and they're a waste of my time anyway. So I decided that the next best thing to do in the South would be a waitress and that is working out really well. I decided that the best choice of restaurant in the South would be Cracker Barrel. Um, because if you look at me, I basically define cracker. And it works out really well. I am not a good waitress. I forget everything. But I go to work and I put my hair in pigtails and I'll go out to the table and they'll be like, oh, you're so cute. You remind me of Pippi Longstocking or Laura Ingalls, you know, some <laughs> stupid shit like that. And they'll be like, is there anything that we can pray for for you today? And I just say something stupid like my grandma, you know, I'll just be like, she's got early onset. She keeps calling me by my mom's name. And it's like me and my mom don't even look that much alike. It's just, it's really taking its toll on me. And they'll be like, we completely understand. No wonder you got our order wrong. Here's $15. <laughs> Go help yourself. And it's like, I didn't write down what they ordered. I was too busy thinking about anything else. You know, it's like, my grandma does not have early onset. She calls me by my name every single time. She never gets it wrong because I'm the favorite grandchild. I like the three. But sometimes I'll go back into the kitchen and my life is not so great anymore because some 30 year old grill cook who probably doesn't have a car will come up behind me and be like, do you like to take it in the ass? Oh. And it's oh, like, God. yes, but not by you, you know? <laughs> like, you don't even have a car. Like, you cannot drive me to CVS to go and get the lube to make this process easier. Like, what are you doing wasting my time? And it's like, I'll go back into the break room to try and hide from this grill cook because, you know, he's going to start slinging them steaks and pancakes and whatever the fuck my grill has, you know. Um, and I'll go and hide in the break room. And the other day I went back there and I was really surprised and shocked because I came across something so, like, whoa, awe-inspiring. I saw the Hispanic salad maker hugging the penis of my manager with her mouth. And I was really blown 
away by how beautiful it was. Oh my God. Because it reminded me that America really is the melting pot. Oh. Because they did not speak the same language at all, but they were integrating perfectly. It's like, oh my God. If they were just out of view of the corporate cameras, and I didn't want to be seen by them because I wanted them to keep enjoying it. But if I could have, I would have filmed that and I would have sent that to CNN and Fox News and I've been like, everybody needs to see this. Racism is dead. <laughs> but I did not do that. I just turned back and I just watched from afar because she was doing a really good job. I wanted to pick up some tips, you know, in case I did decide to be a prostitute again. She was doing good. I would not have gotten a ticket if I had done what she had been doing that day, you know? Um, during COVID, the quarantine part, not the now part, um, I wasn't really getting sexually harassed very much, and I kind of started to miss it, you know? Like, I was really missing the guys at the gas station that would tell me to stay beautiful as I bought my Newport cigarettes, and it's like, <laughs> you know, in 10 years, I am not going to be beautiful anymore based off of my purchase tonight. I'm going to have a raspy voice, I'm going to have those wrinkled up little boobs, like, it's going to be really upsetting. But I needed that ego boost, even though I knew it was a lie. Um, and I decided the only thing to accommodate that would be to go and get a pap smear. Because the doctor's offices were still open, and I figured that if no one else was going to finger me, my doctor would do it for $100 and tell me whether or not I had cervical cancer. Because there's really not any symptoms of that until you're on death's door. And I really want to make a couple more mistakes before I go out. And I want to have like a good timeline of how much I've got left. So I went and I put on that little paper gown. And I found that no matter how many times you put on that paper gown, I always feel ashamed. Even though nothing is going on really, I feel like something bad has just happened to me or something bad is about to happen to me. You know, either way, I'm clenching my butt cheeks because I'm scared. And I laid down on the little table, and she came in, and she was like, do you want someone to be in here with you while this happens? And I was like, nope, absolutely not. I want it to be just you and me. And she was like, okay. And I was like, you're not going to rape me or anything, are you? You seem frightening. And she was like, no, of course not. But she did. She did rape me. And it was very rough. And I thought based off of the porn I had been watching recently, I would be ready to be taken, but I was not. Like there were leaks everywhere, even though we were not outside. I could not find my underwear. It's like, it was like Brock Turner all over again, but in a Southern doctor's office. And I really wanted to join the Me Too movement that day, but I don't have a Twitter, so I didn't think that I would be able to reach out to people. Um, so I decided the next best thing would be to start doing hard drugs. Um, just so that I could forget about it. You know, fit and all the stuff that might take me out or might maybe lose my memory. Something that's going to send me to the streets. Um, and the bad thing about that is all of my friends are starting to get off of hard drugs. And they're starting to get, you know, fit again. And they're gaining all this weight. And they don't look skinny and sick like me anymore. And they're talking about getting these Bible verse quote tattoos. Like those needles are any better than the ones they were using before. I'm just like, in the eyes of God, all sin is the same. So do whatever you want and stop inviting me to elevation. I don't want that sticker on the back of my fucking car. But anyway, that was my time. I'm actually thinking.